my last session. Um, I'm still around today, so if you have questions over stuff I've talked about in my first session or this session or anything else you want to talk about, um, come find me. I try to be available and answer questions, just hear what you guys are doing. I do a lot of my work is writing articles for Petri.com, a lot of PowerShell related, and I get a lot of my ideas from people like you. What problems are you facing? What are you trying to do? I like to help people, and then I say, oh, well, if he needed help with that problem, I bet someone else would like to know how to do that, and then I write about it. So if you have problems or something, come find me. One of those kind of problems, if you will, or challenge, or something that we think about when we need to work with PowerShell is logging. And by that I mean recording some piece of information or pieces of information. And what I'm going to talk about is kind of logging from two perspectives. One, I have some script or function that I've written and as part of that command, I want the option, and I usually want it to be an option, you may want it to be mandatory, but I want to be able to record some pieces of information. <clears throat> either an audit trail or something for debugging. I'm going to talk a lot more in abstract details. I do have some concrete techniques I'm going to share, but I'm going to talk more in terms of logging from a broader perspective. And then I'm also going to talk about logging PowerShell in general in your session um, or whenever someone is using PowerShell. Some of that content may be duplicated from what Krishna talked about in his talk on Monday. And I'm hoping that we're not using the same demos. If you, so if you saw his talk, maybe it'll look familiar, but that's fine because it's probably new to you, and so reinforcement's always good. Uh, there will be a mix of V4 and V5 stuff that I'll be showing. I'll try to specifically point out what is V5 only. Now, eventually, probably a lot of the V5 stuff will be backported down. Um, so if you don't see it right now in what you're doing, wait and hopefully it'll be there. All right. So now that you know what I'm talking about, if you need to go get coffee, say, and, or go whatever, that's fine. Just now's your chance. I always like to give people an opportunity to gracefully. That's not happening. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm hoping one of these days, the room will just empty and go, oh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so I'm gonna, <clears throat> I just have a few slides. I'll try to do mostly demo. And I do want to leave time for questions. But if you have questions anywhere along the way, uh, just raise your hand, jump in. So some things that you might want to do when you are running a script or a command, you want to log the activity. You may want to record the activity, what it's doing, <laughs> and what things maybe are being processed. And when I say logging, I guess I should be clear about this. I mean something that is going to be persistent, right? Yeah, you can display messages all to the screen if you want, but when the script ends, that information is gone. I want to have a way of making it persistent. And it can be more than just writing to a text file. And I have something I'm going to show you here. You may want to be able to just log errors as they happen, or maybe only specific type of errors. So all I'm talking about here are just some of the reasons you might want to be doing logging. How many of you have been scripting PowerShell for years and feel your... All right, so who wants to come up and do my talk? <laughs> all right, so I'll be asking you questions then. Do, so let me, I guess let me pause then here. Do you guys do have code in your scripts to add logging, to record errors or audit trail information, which I think is a, another example that I have here. People do some of this now? Well, then why are you here? You want to do it better. Oh, well, let's see if I can do um. <laughs> Well, maybe. I, 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 as I was preparing for this, I thought a lot about how I used to do logging and thinking, how could I do it better? So maybe I'll have something better. Um, and also for debugging and troubleshooting. Uh, one of the things that I always tell people when I'm teaching them scripting or tool making is you have to think about who is using your tool and how will they use it. I mean, if any of you write scripts and stuff that are used by other people other than you? 
few of you. <clears throat> you may want to be able to include a way so that if they have a problem, they can run the command in such a way to provide you additional information, provided you can't go and watch them type it, so that you can see, okay, what's going on here? Why is this not working? And that may be you in six months or a year when you come back to the script and go, why doesn't this work? <clears throat> so I do this a lot in having a way so that people can, if someone's running it, that is not necessarily the person who wrote the script, that they can see what's going on or they can record the information so that I can see what they did. So I do have some techniques. Uh, some of these I'm sure you have used, I know you have used. <clears throat> First off is just explicit logging to a text file. You, in your script, you send some information to outfile. Some of you like to use probably set content or add content. Kind of does the same thing. I personally have just gotten the use of using outfile. What I do not do, and, and this is probably more of a personal preference, is I do not use the console legacy redirection operators. So I'm talking about the greater than and the double greater than. For two reasons. One, it's a legacy operator. They only exist because the PowerShell host that they're running in still recognize them. There's no guarantee that some future host that you might run a PowerShell script in will support those operators unless PowerShell team decides to include them in some special way. And then my other reason is if I use the console redirection, the legacy operators, I don't get the benefits of the parameters for out file, right? I can't control the encoding or the width or the other uh, providing, no, don't overwrite this file. So there's some benefits in using the command. Let's always tell people, use the out file. Now, if you are just doing something at the console, just quick and dirty, yeah, I need to quickly save it, and you don't want to type out file, then fine, use the console redirection. But if you're doing logging with out file in a script, use out file. Don't use console redirection. Everyone know what I'm talking about? Yes, no? <clears throat> you could, and so I'm going to show you here, log your information to a CSV. <clears throat> and then once we get to version 5, we have got a new thing, just like a, a new command, let write information, which is really cool, and I think it's going to open up a lot of possibilities. Okay, you wanted to come up and do no, this now? <laughs> just to hear your thoughts about our file versus uh, add content. Add content, I think they both do the same. I always use out file because that's typically what I want to do. I'm just going to send information to a file if I want, I can append. I've not done enough, and that's a great question that I will have to research because there's my next article, the difference between add content, set content, not file. And when, I honestly don't know really the difference between the two. I don't know, but I think add content, it works on the providers. Uh, so it's hooked into the providers where write and file is very specific to a file provider. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's out the form thing. I'm sorry, out is what? Out file, doesn't it do form thing by default? Yeah, out, right. Out file will take whatever PowerShell is formatting so if you have stuff and you pipe it, let's say, to format table, you could pipe format table to out file. Normally, the format command list should be the last thing in your expression unless you send it to one of the out commandlets, except out grid view. That doesn't <laughs> <laughs> Love that consistency. <clears throat> so, yeah, and so there, there are times where I have, I'm getting some information in my script and Maybe I'm logging if I want it to be in a list, so I'll then can pipe it to format list and then send it to out file. I, right, I don't think that will work with add content, but I, I'll have to test that. How many of you use add content, set content? And why do you use that, June? Habit. Habit. So most of you use out file? All right, so let's jump over here. Now, for right now, I am Windows 8.1, PowerShell version 4, but it probably has the November update, so I may have some V5-ish bits somewhere in there, uh, but I don't, don't think that's going to affect what I want to show you, but that's what we are working with. So, 
just give you some examples. And these are things that I might use, actually do use in some of my scripts. So I have a little script here. So what I find is I want, if I'm going to be writing information to a log file, something I'm going to put in my script, I want to have, prob I like to have some standard sets of information. Remember, I, if you were in my last session, you know how lazy I am. So I don't want to have to keep retyping the same information. So I have a little function here called write log. And as with everything this week, you'll have this as part of the downloads for the session. So don't worry about trying to figure out, okay, wow, how did he do that? You'll have this available to you. So it just basically takes a parameter for the path to the file. I have it hard coded to my temp directory, PowerShell log.txt. You can change it to whatever you want. And the way that this works is it looks in your PowerShell session for a couple variables. And so these would be things you could set in your profile. My purpose for writing this function was to be something that I could reuse across all of my scripts and functions. So it looks for a logging preference variable. And uses, I use the same values that we use for the other preference variables. <clears throat> so it's going to look, and I don't have a parameter for it because it's going to look in the current, it's going to, not going to find it in my current scopes, it's going to read up the hierarchy like all other preference variables. So if it finds that it's equal to continue, then it's going to look for another variable, dollar logging file preference. So in my PowerShell session, I can create two variables. One that controls whether logging is turned on for whatever scripts I have that are going to use this function. And another where I can set a default location for that file. So if I wanted to, I could have one file that whatever script I'm running that calls this function, it's all going to go to that file. Or I can have a different <clears throat> location depending upon the script that I'm running. So in this case, I have a path variable. So if this is not defined in the scope, it's going to use the variable that I pass, I'm going to call the function. We're going to follow that. <clears throat> it does seem like a lot of work, but it works. And then here's the, the main part of my script. And this would be something you could customize for, to whatever you need it. I'm basically going to write in a text file, line by line, something that looks like, let's do this for the video, something that looks like this, comment line. I've got the date. Can you raise it on the screen? Raise it up. So it'll have the date, which of course when you run it will be in whatever local format is appropriate to your you know, culture. <clears throat> and then, so, and I'm doing it's a short date, so, so the date and the time, and then it will have the message and I'm sending it to outfile, <coughs> and I'll have it always set to append. You could add parameters if you want to specify the encoding um, I typically set my out file and always encode it as ASCII. That's just kind of a preference that I have. Because uh, when I use my files in other things, I find if they're in Unicode, it doesn't format right for me. But you could add all sorts of other information to this, right? You could put in, record the username, the computer name, their operating system, um, the lunar phase of the moon, whatever information you might want, you could put in that. And now I have a simple logging mechanism that I can run. Let's see if I have a demo example. Now, let me just... So right now, I don't have any of those preferences set. So I'm just going to do right So in my script I could just have as many of these write log and then whatever message I want. It was just going to take it as a string. You could pipe, pipe it to it. And the 
let's see if this. Yeah, look at that jet record. Oh, that's because I need to set my logging preference to continue. That's right, it's not a built-in variable. I'm thinking it is. spelled it, didn't I? Yeah. Prefer preference. Now. PowerShell log. So there's the file that it created. And then there's all the comments. So I can run, let me scroll this here for the so you. <clears throat> and I think I have an, an example file that I built, but I forgot to put the script name in my demo file, so I can't call what it's called, so I'm just winging it. Yeah. One comment about following times and dates. I would really encourage people to use ISO standard you can use whatever format you want it to be, but that the if the thing is, if people start using that, we can start correlating uh, and knowing when in time things happen, and not trying to guess. Was that oh, did you write that in the United Kingdom or yeah. Sweden? Yep. Or and that's a good point because you know I made the, the point about knowing who's going to use your script. Same thing applies to the log. Who's going to look at the log and what are they going to do with it? So the corollary to that is if no one is ever going to look at whatever you log, don't bother doing it. So whenever someone will I used to do consulting work and they say, oh, yeah, we need this feature. And I would say, okay, who's going to use it? Are they ever going to use it? And if they finally get any answer, they'll say, yeah, then why are we spending time doing it? So same, so for me, I wrote this logging mechanism and the structure in a way because I'm the only one that's ever going to look at the logs. So that format that I'm using works fine for me. But that's an excellent point. Write it in the format that makes sense for you or whoever, again, whoever's going to be looking at the logs. If you're going to be doing something or something, you're going to give a tool to someone who might be in Australia and they're going to run it and then you're going to look at the log and you're in Europe, yeah, having that, that UTC format makes much more sense. But you get, uh, that's a decision that you have to think about, which a lot of scripters don't. They don't think about who's going to run this and how are they going to do it, what are their expectations. We just typically write code for ourselves. And you got to kind of start breaking that habit because I'm assuming most of you want to really go far with PowerShell, in which case you're going to be tool makers and you're going to be writing code for other people. So if you start thinking that about that now, get in those habits of thinking about writing it for other people, not for yourself, that will change, I think, some of your habits. <coughs> so all I would need to do is take my function, either dot source it in my whatever script I want to use it, put it in my profile. I could turn it into just a simple module so that I, as soon as PowerShell sees write log, it would load the module and have everything going for me, however you want to do it. This is not a full-blown, completely fleshed out, 100% ready to go tool. And maybe I'll put it up on GitHub. Would that be helpful? Does this look, do you like this idea 
of having the, the preference variable to control whether you turn on logging or not. Yes? All right. I thought it was kind of <coughs> clever. All right, so my next example <coughs> is what I have here, some CSV logging. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Load up uh, this file. One of the drawbacks to the sort of the write log function I just showed you is it's just text. Maybe that's fine if you want to kind of read through what was done and look at time with other information. But for me, PowerShell, the great thing, it's all about the objects. So why not log objects? And if I would need to log objects, remember logging to disk, make it persistent, I need to serialize it, either CSV or XML. So I came, wrote a low function called write CSV log. And this is designed to basically take whatever object I want, and I've got a custom way of, of constructing that, and exporting that to a CSV file. So if you think about it, then the benefit is I can re-import that CSV file, which has all my logging information, and now I have logging information that is filterable, sortable, I've got more that I can do with it as opposed to just a simple text file. So in my function here, I'm creating a custom object. Again, I'm just using simple get date. You could put in, you could use get date formats, whatever format you need it to be. I'm capturing the username. Again, my text message, whatever it is the information I want to log. I'm capturing the script that it's running in, the line number, and then exporting to a CSV file and appending it. So that's what the function does. And I have a similar uh, import CSV file, CSV log. Let's scroll, scroll down here. A question about that. Uh, this custom object, uh, it's not ordered, is that because down level compatibility? This, this is, because I'm making PS custom object, this will order this. This will, okay. Yeah, so this will be in order. This, so this is going to require PowerShell version three, three yeah. or later. I can never remember what order things come in now. Um, so let me show you how this, I have a little demo script that actually works with it. So I, actually, let me make sure I dot source my functions here. So now what you would do is Again, you could turn it into a module if you don't want to dot source it. You can have a little function. I've got a little function here called demo me. All it's basically doing is just writing information to the CSV log. So let me just load that function. And the function does allow you to specify the path to the CSV file. So all I'm doing in my demo and this would be something you'd only have to do once if you want or if you could hard code it. I'm just dynamically building a log file name. Let's go to my user directory under Windows PowerShell. I'm going to format, format mine with a particular date format that has year, month, day, hour, minute, second. I'm also then going to include the name of the command that's running. So that'll be part of the log file and then finally turning all of that into the CSV name. You could do this all in one long, ugly, eh, I didn't like that, so let's see what I, do this one line at a time. So now I've done a PSH path. And that's why, because that failed, that's why when I build scripts, is I don't try to write everything in one long line because it makes it harder to troubleshoot. It's much easier, I think, oh, yeah, what am I thinking? This, my invocation, there's a built-in command, that's not going to be really defined until I run something. And what I need to run is this script that's in the pane here this demo write CSV log. 
So this will programmatically, as the script is running, this will have a value. This is my command.name. I've only had one small cup of coffee. <coughs> now, to make things easier for myself, I'm adding, because I have my writeCSV log function loaded into my PowerShell session, so I'm setting a default parameter value, which is new in v4, and setting the path to the name of this log file. This again could be something that if you wanted to have one log file for all of your scripts, you could set that in your profile or in, in your module or wherever you need to have it set. And then whenever you run, in this case demo me inside the function itself, you know, I could be doing other things in here. Let's actually have it do something like get service. Instead of sleeping, let's make it somewhat interesting. All right, so now let's save this. Run this. So my log file was created. It ran the log file. I got my little five second sleep. And then what I'm doing here at the end, I, this I can just run separately. There's the log file re-imported. But now I've got objects. It's just custom objects. But there are my properties. The reason I wrote that little import function, instead of just using import CSV, when you import CSV, everything's a string. And I wanted or needed to be able to treat the, the date as a date time, and I wanted the line to be a, uh, an integer, so I could do better sorting and filtering. So I just have my little function, just a wrapper to import CSV, putting some custom properties so I can get the type right. My demo here, I know it's not very compelling. It's really more of a proof of concept. So now I can capture, and you could add as much other information you want because you're just writing an object and saving it. Now I've got log information that is filterable. If you wanted to, you could change, take the same idea further and log it to a database. If you have a central SQL server that you use for your team, you could do the same type of thing. Build a little function so instead of having it write to CSV, use the SQL commandlets, or use the SMO objects, whatever you want to do. it. But start thinking, not necessarily about text information that you're logging, but think about a richer object. Does that make sense? Does that seem like a good idea or a waste of time? If, if, you, say, if, if you think it's a waste of time, please, that's fine to tell me that. He does, yes. So, no, I'm not saying it's a waste of time, but I write the tools for my colleagues, and they don't have like the PowerShell expertise that other people do with everything. And so, basically, if they need to parse the CSV, which is a bit, can be a bit too much information in it, it's just going to be. Easy. Right, but then they better. could send you so the CSV. I use colors, I use right host, kidding puppies, like people would say. Yeah. It, it just colors, you know, warning is in yellow. Okay, so. In red, like really. It's Hold on to that thought, because you're, you're kind of leading into my next part <laughs> okay. here, which I've got like 10 minutes. There's another question? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So in, in, in the .NET well, developer world, there are logging frameworks. So there's yeah, I'm not a .NET developer. Yeah, yeah, no, well, no logging frameworks. Has nobody done this for PowerShell? Well, well is, is there a common yes, logging? Yes, there is. There is. Yeah. Uh, Adam Flat in New Jersey just did a PS logging module. Ah. And I, I don't know. Oh, well, then why am I doing this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's up on I think. I think he's submitting. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean, there, there's, there are lots of ways yeah. that you could do it. These are just some techniques that I have used and that yeah. I have found them useful. Yeah. 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 I have just a quick comment. So what you now have is structured data for some of the metadata 
but not necessarily the actual data that you yeah. put into the string that you're logging. Oh, I could, you know, I just put in a message. I could, whatever the, the if my script is running something, I'd have to have some way of looking at that object maybe come from the pipeline. Like maybe I've run get service and filter where the running services. I can then have my message say there are substring blah blah measure count of running services. So you can structure your message however you want to do. It's just going to be a piece of string. That's my point. It's just going to be a piece of string, which in some ways you could actually extend this to include the actual objects. And oh, sure. Whatever object you have. And if you were to do yes. Yeah, so what you're saying is instead of just capturing the message, maybe this is a nested object with what you're trying to log. And if you go that route, then you can take my same concept, but you have to use XML. Yep. This works fine for flat, simple data. Or you could use inline JSON, for example, Excellent. and then you get yeah. into the thing that you're saving the schema in every message, and you're bloating the log file, and then it gets into a big discussion, should we have schema-based logging, which is a lot of overhead, but it's efficient, and it's constant pros. So remember, these examples I'm showing are, I'm running a script and I want to be able to save some piece of information about what it's doing. What he's talking about in the back, what kind of gets into my next part, is maybe I want to see exactly what is happening in the PowerShell session in general. And that's where, let me come back to my slides here. That's where you can do things such as using transcripts and associated with write verbose. I'm a big proponent, and I always tell people, use write verbose. Put it in at the very beginning of your script. I'm not a big fan of write debug, because my scripts are perfect the first time through, so I never really have to <laughs> debug. But I do like write verbose, because that helps me see exactly what like the state of a variable is or what the process is going on. And if I have a transcript, and I'm not really going to demo this because I think you all know what transcripts are and, and write for both. But if I have a transcript, then I can see all those verbose messages. So what I tell people is, yes, you write a, a tool for someone else to run. They have a problem. If you have the right level of verbose logging, you can tell them run the command, or first of all, start a transcript, which now works in the ISC in PowerShell version 5, if they happen to be using that, or you happen to be using it. Start a transcript. Run your command dash verbose. They'll get the error message or whatever result. Tell them to stop transcript. They send you the transcript file. You can see exactly what they saw on their screen, right? I don't think we think about that. We just think about transcript something for ourselves. Remember, think about other people, how they're going to use it. So if you, but if you put that verbose information, starting the script, uh, querying Active Directory, found 100 computer accounts, or even before that, write verbose information to show the username, the computer name that they're on, the date, the time, their operating system, PowerShell version table, any piece of information that might help you figure out how come they're having a problem where this doesn't work. So using a transcript is a very useful feature. Newer features, they introduced some of these in V4, Module logging and script block logging, which is probably some of the stuff that Krishna showed. And I will try to quickly show if we have time. Let's come back here. So in module logging, and this would be something that's kind of done per machine. If you get any module, there's a property called, if you can see that there, let me scroll this up called log pipeline execution details. So <clears throat> on the Hyper-V module I have on my laptop, that by default is set to false. I can easily, just assuming I can stay focused here, I can easily change that to true. And then you can also use group policies to do this. What this does is every time now that I use or whoever, whatever machine this is turned on for, whenever I use any commands from that module, they get logged. So I'm going to run a command from the Hyper-V module. It's going to get a, a VM, completely transparent to the user, 
But in the event log, in the Windows PowerShell log, you'll see messages that have pipeline, start with pipeline. So I'm just going to get the first five. So here's the first one and the pipeline execution details. Let me bring up event log viewer. So you can see what that looks like. And that will stay logging anytime I run a command in the Hyper-V module. Information will be logged. Up here. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, I was in the right spot. Oh, there it is. So there you can see, uh, get, there's the command. It showed what the command was that I ran and a little background information. And I can see, I can dig in and find out who ran it, what host <coughs> they were on, and some background information. So you could turn on logging on a per module basis and track what commands or what things are being run in that particular module. That change I made only exists for as long as the module is important in this session. Uh, or to make things easier, you could also use get win event and I have a little filter XML query. And in this case, you can search in the Windows PowerShell operational log. This information is also logged there. In this, basically the same information, the structure in the message is a little bit different. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah. Yeah. Does it include the errors like the access denied? Let's find out. Um, or command not yeah, I'm going to. Okay, so let's run get VM for a non existent machine. Uh, I'll just go here. Eh, getting carried away with the tab. I love tab completion. Alt tab. What am I looking for? IC. Where's my frick? The IC. There we go. You have too many keyboard shortcuts. Minimize. Yeah, so there's the see, there's my second command I just ran. So it's got the command in there um, as to whether there's information. Let's do F5. Yes, yeah, so see, it says get command foo, detail sequence, run space ID, details. And there's my information about the error. It's kind of hard to read, but says a parameter is invalid. How greedy was unable to find the machine name. So we recorded the error as well in the event log. But it's not warning or another event. event no, it's an informational event. Yes. It's, yes, it's informational. It doesn't it's informational. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't show up as a warning event log entry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Does it work for custom modules? Any module. It doesn't have to be a micro. I just grab the Microsoft module because I use Hyper-V all the time. So there are no uh, special requirements for the modules? Not that I'm aware of. What if, was the question? The, the question was, are there any requirements for module to support that logging execution detail? And I think it's just that if it's a module in PowerShell version 4 and later, that property exists. And if you set that to true, then PowerShell will log all the commands in that module. So I don't think it matters whether it's a module that I wrote or someone else. Uh, moving on really quickly here. I'm going to skip the transcripts piece because you guys can try that later if you want. Uh, let me show you really quickly the script block, script block logging that is new in V5. And oh, I never got a chance to show you the right information pieces. I'm not going to have time for that. 
So script block logging, this requires V5. So I'm going to quickly jump into, and somewhere I missed a computer name. Oh, you know what? Is it over here? So I'm going to jump in. I am going to show you the right information stuff because I think this is a useful piece. This goes back kind of to the script logging, but or things that you might add in your V5 sessions. So I'm going to, I got to, because I need V5, I'm going to jump into a server that's running uh, the V5 preview. And there is a commandlet now called write information. I'll let you look at the help. And it depends upon a new set of variables. Uh, there's a pre information preference variable, which by default will silently continue. And I'm going to set it to continue. And then with write information, you can send message data, which is again going to be strings. But what's nice is you can tag the information. I'm going to send it to out variable. You can, even though I've, there's also a parameter level information action parameter, it has an alias of IA on most machines. Uh, you can set that to continue, and there's also a new information variable. So, actually, I don't think I. Don't really need the out variable. Let's see if this will work for me now. <clears throat> when you set that information preference to continue, it actually will write the message to the screen. But what it also created is a variable that I create called dollar $INF that has all the information, the tags, when it was run, the username, and all of that information. So you could build a little function here called test me. And all I did was basically get information, but I'm writing information to a variable just like you can in the regular information with the, like the error action and out variable. You can plus it to append it. So now $INF has all the information throughout my entire log. It's kind of a newer way of doing like my CSV approach because now this is just an object. And I can then export it to CSV or probably XML might be better because tags is going to be a collection. But if I want then to sort that information, that's kind of uh, useful. Real quickly, and I probably won't have time to actually walk through all these demos, you'll have them available to you. And again, I think these are things that um, Krishna demonstrated. <clears throat> there are now settings in V5, and they can be configured in the registry. Eventually, there should be group policy settings for them, where it will log in the operational log in PowerShell it will log activity that you are doing. So I'm going to go back here. I'm still in that PS session. And I'm going to turn on, load all my functions real quickly. All right, so I basically have turned on the script block logging. So here's a script block I'm going to run. So this is not even a script. <clears throat> and I'm going to just run a script block itself. A lot of this was designed to protect you from malware and other things that are running outside of a script or even not written to disk. But you could use it as well. So if I invoke my script block, it does something relatively mild. In the PowerShell operational log, I will then have information, and I format it briefly. Now in this case, I, got, I get some errors, 
and I think these errors are related to the fact that we're still in a preview. But there's my the script block that it. Oh, see, <clears throat> I think I already have this turned on in my session from testing. So it showed me trying to define that function. So it's all logged there. And again, this is all transparent to the user. Um, people, you probably saw some of the protected messaging commandlets. You can then get this information protected if you don't want uh, people to overwrite or hide stuff from you. So you could then use this also, also this type of logging if you want a picture about what is happening on this computer for everything PowerShell related. All right, so I really rushed through the end there. I'll be around if you want to talk about this further. Any other questions? Tim? Um, what's your approach for remote logging? For example, you've got a script whereby you've got local code running and then you're maybe going to be doing an invoke command. You still want to retain the same format for logging, but of course it's running in a remote session at that point. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Uh, you kind of still have to rely on remote logging or logging to that remote machine and then like through the event log and going back and getting it. Um, trying to write to a central file, you could still do. You either have to, you know, provide you haven't set up cred SSP. The only thing that limits you in the second hop is just a credential. So if you have a way of just in your script of prompting again for a credential, there are lots of hacks to get around that. Just include a hack like that and then put the logging into your script and have it right back to the local session. Um, there are ways now in V5, and actually I have a script that I wrote even before that, that will allow you to copy files across a PowerShell remoting session. Okay. So you could then create the script, create the file remotely, and then copy it back to your machine, assuming it's not greater than 10 megabytes. <laughs> Unless you modify one or another. But yeah, the, the remoting piece does add a little uh, wrinkle to it, but I don't think it's anything that's insurmountable. Other questions? Now you all wish you'd gone over there, don't you? <laughs> Just another thing, you can extend all of this uh, by creating a module that creates a common proxy for write verbals, write, uh, write info, uh, write error, so that everything you send to write error, write verbals, you can also log it using... Oh yeah, you, yeah, that's true, I, I hadn't thought about that, yeah. So if you, but you have to, you have to write those things in your commands, in your scripts, from the very beginning. So there are lots of ways. There, you know, people saying, "Well, how can we don't have the PowerShell logging?" Well, it's actually there. You just have to know where to go to look for it and decide what's the best way. Once I know I'm repeating myself, but who's going to use your scripts? Who's going to use the logs? What information needs to be in there? you're going to have to take those extra steps to put all the pieces together. The forums exist on PowerShell.org, my columns on Petri.com if you need help in getting things going. All right, anything else? One more? Well, just, well, I mean, if you look at the event logs, uh, the new ones, right, there, you, you should also consider, just like you're saying, who's going to consume it. And it's a good idea to break up uh, your logs for different consumers because you know you have, uh, you have diagnostics, analysis, operational, admin in the ETL logs uh, or ETW logs, and I don't know. Then you can have less verbosity or, or more verbosity depending on the consumer, which can also make life easier when you're digesting them. Yeah, you have to plan ahead, and I know that's hard for us, <laughs> especially for those of us who are guys. June plans ahead all the time. But the rest of us in the room, we do not plan ahead, so it's a little harder. So if you need tips on how to plan ahead, talk to June. All right, thank you all.